The next tool we want to explore in 3D Coat's Retopology toolset is the Strokes tool. This is probably the most powerful and versatile manual retopology tool in the entire workspace. The others have their own benefits, but they generate one polygon at a time. Whereas the Strokes tool, you can sketch out your topology, and when you're happy with it, you can hit the Enter key to have 3D Coat generate a mesh from it. So allow me to go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm first going to turn on the symmetry plane, and if you want polygons mirrored over to the other side, real polygons, not just a preview, you probably want to turn off virtual mirror mode because this is the default method and what you see on the opposite side is just a preview. It's not a real copy of a polygon. So when you uncheck that, if you've already done quite a bit of work, you're going to see a blank side on the other end of your symmetry plane. So I just wanted to mention that up front. The other thing I want to mention that's very, very important is whenever you're working with symmetry, make sure to turn your mirror snapping up to something like 20 or 30 or 40, something in that range. And the reason is that if you don't adjust this value, it's set at zero by default. And that is going to leave you with a bit of a mess to have to clean up when you're done because you'll have overlapping vertices. To prevent that, your mirror snapping will look for vertices within a certain threshold or within a certain range and it will weld those together. So uh, with that said, I can now just drag to create a stroke. These individual control points snap to the surface of the model and if you don't have enough, then you might have parts of your stroke that dips beneath the voxel object. And when that happens, you may find that after you sketch out your, your topology, you may have some missing polygons, and that's usually the culprit, is because you don't have enough spline points density. But if you have too much, let's say if I wanted to adjust this stroke, I'm giving myself a bit too much work because I've got too many points to actually have to adjust. So I want to strike a good balance if I can. While your point is highlighted, you can hit the delete key to remove it. And click that. Click a point anywhere along this stroke and it will highlight it. Hit the delete key. Or I can hit the delete button. If you have multiple strokes and you want to remove all of them, just hit clear. Again, the delete button will just delete what's highlighted. So, obviously I had a few too many points for my own liking, so I'm going to reduce the spline points density. The default value is 100, but you may find that on a very large model, you need to actually reduce this. So, the larger the model, the smaller or the lower the value here on your spline points density. The smaller the model is, the larger the number. Also, on a model like this, the spline points density may be fine on a large part of your model, but if you're working in a tight, confined space, maybe like the inside of the ears, you may not have enough spline points density. Okay, So you'll just need to adjust this as you go. So I'll hit delete. I'll probably reduce that in half. There we go. And that's about right. Okay. If you're like me, there are times where your hand is not quite so steady, you can always hold down the control key and click to create individual points as you create your stroke rather than just freeform brushing. Okay. So again, hold down the control key and just click where I want to lay down points. This will also allow you to continue working even after you've created a stroke. If you want to continue building your stroke, you can hold down the control key and again, just continue that way, clicking to create your individual points. And then just let up from the control key when you're done. If you want to break a stroke anywhere along the path, 
you can hold down the control key and click a point and it will break it there and then I can click on that point delete that part of the spline and 3D Coat will generate a quad wherever you have an intersection of four lines or a triangle where you have an intersection of three. So let me create a few here. If I have a five point pole like this, I just want to mention you probably want to go back and inspect that after you've generated your mesh. I also want to mention that if for some reason you're on a retopo layer that is hidden, when you hit the enter key, you won't get a mesh. It has to be visible. Just wanted to mention that in case you run across that issue. So let's hit the enter key and it's going to generate that for us. So in this way, it's something of an auto read topology tool in its own right, but you get full manual control. Whereas auto read topology, you still have the option to lay down some strokes using the very same tool, but those strokes are just hints to the algorithm where you want the edge flow. And the auto read topology tool is having to guess the rest. That's something to keep in mind. Yeah, let me go ahead and zoom in now. With the strokes tool active, just as you would with the add and split tool or the points and faces tool, you can right click over a vertice and drag. And I can see indeed there are some overlapping verts here. So to weld these, there is no weld tool. I can just right click and drag one point over the other. And sometimes with this tool, you may not be able to see the little red dot but it will weld these. And so I right click and drag and now I know that these are all indeed welded. So that's what I typically try to do. Anytime I know that I'm creating a five star pole, 3D coat will generate the quads, but you may have a little bit of cleanup on that. Now, as I said, when you are creating strokes, you need four intersecting lines for 3D coat to create a quad. If you have an intersecting line of three, it will generate a triangle. However, let me clear those. When you are building off of existing geometry, 3D coat will snap your initial point to a vertice. In this case, I don't need three strokes because 3D Coat is going to treat this edge as a stroke. Let's hit enter and I have a triangle. And also, if I haven't already mentioned it, if you have a line that's a little bit irregular and you want to smooth it out, you can hit the smooth button. But you want to be a little bit judicious about this because your points may be right on the boundary or the edge of an opening or an edge of a hard surface object and these points might dip off that edge if you use smooth. So you want to be a bit careful about that. You can start outside the mesh and again 3D Coat will snap your final point. So this is a really good tool to continue building even after you've already generated a part of your mesh. So, I enter and once more I can right click if I want to tweak the position of the vertices after I'm done. There's another component to this tool that makes it probably the most valuable in this entire tool set and that is the ability to create loops that extend all the way around a given object. And this isn't just confined to conical shaped objects such as a, a tail, limbs, fangs, things of that sort. 
or even cylindrical shaped objects here. This will work on a cube as well. So let me go to an orthographic view and a left view. And when you are using this particular tool, if your object is right down the center, like this tail is, I don't need symmetry. Okay, symmetry is going to just make a mess of this. So let's hit our S key and disable that temporarily. So I'm going to start outside the object and finish my stroke outside on the other end. I'll do the same thing up here. If at any point in time you want to constrain your stroke in 90 degree increments, then simply hold down the shift key and as you create your loop, 3D coat again will constrain it in 90 degree increments. There is a slight problem with this though. The 90 degree increments is in screen space, so if your model is off angle, then again, holding the shift key is not going to help much. Nevertheless, this is not an issue whenever you are beginning your stroke outside the object and ending outside in order to create these loops like this because you have a straight line from point A to point B. It really was only a slight issue whenever you are working inside the model along the surface trying to sketch the topology. To remedy that problem, we now have support for using shape draw modes in 3D Coat's ePanel when using the strokes tool. This will allow us to use different shapes like the rectangle, ellipse, spline, even polygonal lasso. We can use that to create a straight line from point A to point B inside along the surface of the model. I'll go ahead and resume now by laying down a few loops. Now, I'll always go into orthographic view in order to remove any perspective distortion. So we'll go back to a side view here. And when I rotate about, you can see it wrapped that loop all the way around. And now all I need is one single cross section. 3D Coat is going to use this stroke as an edge ring, and it's going to repeat it using this number of segments. So the default value is 12 and that'll be fine in this case. Now all I need to do is hit the enter key and there you have it.